if it costs us at a craft brewery to fill our growlers, two liter growler, up to $20 a liter at least. So 20 and we recover effectively 18 liters of beer in a tank is $360, okay? But here's where it really gets interesting because we're using two kits. The setup cost for this is 35 bucks. So we say minus 35 per kit. So it's $325. You're saving yourself drinking a top class beer and this is where the cowboys get involved in this thing, which you can make in a van on the road. I mean, we've had a few challenges along the way and people were saying to you guys, are so happy, go happy, go lucky. You can brew in a van, and we actually told people we can do that, so now we have to make good on it. <laughs> we decided we're gonna do a New Zealand version of the Nipah. This is as scarce as hen's teeth in New Zealand. This Rewalker Pale Ale that you get from Black Rock. Rewalker Pale Ale, that's a hopped kit we're gonna use. We're gonna combine that with the wheat unhopped, and we'll do a little baby bag of rewalker that goes with that, which we will do dry hopping. Now let me run you through the equipment, what you need to get going on the road, uh, according to the two cowboys. The whole fermenting thing starts here, which is our corny kegs. So in the old corny, because it's it's not what it used to be, we, we trimmed the, the, the dip tube to keep it a little bit off the bottom so that you don't suck any sediment from it. Um, the new corny, which our good friends at iKegger has graciously provided us with ikegger.co.nz. I brought a ball float from a company called Clear Beer, and I put the ball float in instead of the dip tube so that you don't get any sediment when you actually transfer the beer. You drink it later on. The thing that makes pressure fermenting in a corny keg possible is the spunneling pressure valve. The idea is that in the first couple of days, you're gonna let the yeast do its fermenting and lots of gases and things are gonna escape through your release valve on your corny keg. But then after that, we'll, we'll put this on, close it, control the pressure in the corny keg so that at the same time you're doing pressure fermenting, it carbonates your beer, saves you a lot of time, and also it keeps your system closed so that happy yeast, happy beer, and you can make some beer on the road. The good thing is as we're on the road and it shakes a little, that's actually good for the yeast, I like that. They want, to, they want to be able to swim around and get to all the beautiful nutrients so they can make us some, some beautiful alcohols. The bottom line is you can make good beer with some really basic equipment and you are making beer. There's no need to buy a lot of stuff. Boiling water is your friend. It does two jobbies. It kills all the bugs you don't want. It helps you to dilute the wort, which is a thick consistency like honey. Okay, so let's do some sanitizing. Make sure it sits properly. And all I'm gonna do is give it a good shake. The boiling water, make sure it's in the tank. All the parts in the tank gets covered with boiling water, effectively sanitizing it. So I'm good with that. I'm gonna give it a bit of a squirt all around it with our beautiful vodka you want to sip. No, 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 no that's, your, that's your vodka. Here's the recipe. We've got three cans. This is for the one corny, other corny, and then we'll split this one 50-50 between the two. And that should give you about a beer with about four and a half, five percent alcohol. Make sure no contamination. So give yourself a really good wash there with our beautiful vodkas. I mean, this is like toffee, beautiful. People say it's extracts, not extract. It's concentrated wort. I think there's two companies in Canada making concentrated wort. Why do we do the New Zealand stuff? Because it's only as good as the ingredients you put in. New Zealand's got beautiful ingredients. It has the hops, it has the barley. It, it's just, mm, it's so beautiful. All right, so here we go. We walk on number one. Isn't that beautiful? I don't like keep fighting with it. What I just do is we put a little bit of boiling water in the can and that dissolves it. You can brew with sugar. You can use a, a black rock kit. You can add some, some dextrose to it or you can add some normal sugar to it. That's how people used to do it in the past to keep the cost down. Um, if you want to make a craft quality beer, you need to use a wort, which is produced from grains. 
and that's where this comes in. So we have, instead of just using sugar, now we have a wheat wort that's gonna replace what people in the old days used sugar for. It gives you a better mouthfeel, gives you a better quality beer. About half on this one. A little bit more. That's more than half, eh? That's it. No, no, it's not. Because you still have to wash it. That's it. Done. So we're going to mix it well, and then we're going to add cold water to it so that we get the right temperature for between 20, 23 degrees Celsius to pitch our yeast, put our yeast inside. Let's go put some water in. I'm just going to say what the guy that taught us told us. He said he has done many brews in his 25 year career where he's used tap water and he's used purified water and he asks his panel to compare and tell us which one is which and they've never been able to tell the difference between tap water and purified water. Yes, it has an impact on the yeast. Some yeasts don't like the chlorine if it's a sensitive yeast, but we're not making very sensitive beer here, obviously. So a good strong pale ale yeast, a pale or an ale yeast will do, will do just fine. That's why tap water is our option. Ready for the final step. This is fairly important because you don't want to shock the yeast when you put it in. We're sitting here at about 22, 21 degrees Celsius, which is ideal temperature for you to put your yeast in. I'm going to use Blackrock's own ale yeast and I can pitch it and I can make it really fancy or I can just make sure when I put it in, it mixes well with the fluid. The next thing, we're going to put some of our beautiful Rewaka hops in. You're happy with it? Yeah. That's it. Make sure it's nice, nicely seeded because the last thing you want to do is pick up some of your beautiful rewalk on the ground. Make sure it's not leaking. Next one. I'm going to put our yeast in. Remember this one we said we want to put the sapphire yeast in. Mm. It's going to be nice. So here we're going to put our hops into our new beautiful toy in there. It's got a lid because the hops tend to, to stay on top because it floats and with this you actually keep the hops you put it at the bottom so that it uh, gets a little bit more contact and less sediment when you eventually pour it make sure it seals properly that's it okay so for the first two days we're not going to put this on because we want the yeast to activate, we want them to be happy, a whole lot of fumes are going to go uh, out. So all I'm doing is with this little uh, pressure valve, I will be opening that so that it breathes and whatever CO2 is manufactured actually escapes in the first couple of days. Then we'll close it and then once we close it, we'll put this on our gas connector like so and then we'll set the release valve here at the back so that we can maintain a pressure of around between 10 and 15 psi usually is what I run it at and that way we carbonate our beer and we pressure ferment it. And that, my good friends, is how easy it is to make beer in a van, outside, in beautiful New Zealand.